Hi, my name is Bill Geisley, and I'm the designer of the Geisley Super Semi-Automatic Trigger, or SSA. And today, we're filming a short instructional video to show uh, you how to remove a stock trigger group and install Geisley SSA. First thing we'll do is we'll take our weapon, and in this case, uh, this is a Rock River Arms standard AR-15. Any AR-15 this applies to, whether it's Colt, Bushmaster, Rock River. First thing you want to do is make sure the weapon's unloaded. You're going to want to, want to remove the upper receiver. This video is going to be very, very, very basic. It's not going to be for the advanced gunsmith. Um, it's going to be for someone who really hasn't had that much experience working on AR-15s. So we're going to go into detail of every little thing. Um, if, if you've worked on AR-15s before, you may find a lot of what we're saying here redundant. Uh, but I figured I want to cover all the bases here. Once you remove your upper receiver, we're going to remove the stock trigger group. And the tools you need in order to start working on trigger groups on an AR-15 is you need a small hammer, in this case a four ounce ball peen, flat blade screwdriver in case you have to pull your pistol grip off. On some weapons it's an Allen key, so you might need a standard Allen key. You need some pin punches. This here is an Armstrong roll pin punch, 530 seconds. Works very well for working on AR 15s. We also have a Starrett pin punch set here, which is very handy, has all the different sizes. And again, we choose a uh, 530 second punch, which is, which is the standard pin size here on an AR 15. First thing we do, and first thing you have to realize, is that when you're working on an AR 15 receiver, especially with a trigger group, you need three hands to be able to work on it. And since God didn't give us three hands, you have to get a third one from somewhere. Uh, one technique is you can use what's called a magazine uh, well block, and basically it's a Delrin block, fits in the mag well, and you can then clamp your receiver in a vise, and you can work on it in a vise. We don't really use them here in the shop. I prefer to work in my lap and uh, it's very handy to have a shop apron like this one here which I call the Geisley third hand. So that's how we're going to be doing this and I'll show you starting off what's the first thing we do is uh, remove the hammer. So we decock the hammer and we're going to take our pin punch and our small hammer and we're going to knock out the hammer pin. That's the first thing you do. Always hammer first and then the trigger. As you can see, I just laid in my, my lap here. And everything you do on an AR-15 when it comes to a trigger group is you don't hammer anything. You use very light taps. That's all that's needed. And here we drove our standard pin out, pull our pin punch out, and our hammer comes out. You'll notice I wear prescription glasses. If you don't, take the time to purchase a set of safety glasses. You're working with components under, sp under spring pressure and they could pop out and hit you in the eye. You only have two eyes and they're very difficult to repair. It's one thing if you get cut or something like that, but an eye is a different story. So take the time to wear safety glasses. We don't wear prescription glasses. Once the hammer out is out, you're going to pull the trigger out. Again, same thing. Just a pin punch. And out comes your standard trigger group. That's all it is, just two pins. The way it's held in, is there's a little spring clip, just for information purposes, there's a little spring clip in the center of this hammer that holds the hammer pin in. The trigger pin is held in by the legs of the hammer pin. 
just like so on the side groove of that hammer pin the hammer spring leg captures it and that's what keeps the trigger pin from moving out so it seems like these are a slip fit in there which they are but they are captured so now you have your empty receiver well right here you want to basically clean it just make sure there's not a lot of junk in it um, you can keep your safety installed for the uh, SSA install here sometimes it's easier to remove it or if you don't want to remove it you can back your pistol grip off to lower your detent and then turn your safety 180 degrees from safe and this forces the safety slot to be facing the trigger and you can get more room in there but generally just have it in the fire position and uh, and you'll have enough clearance to put the trigger in this is how the trigger comes complete instructions you have a trigger and disconnector assembly and you have a hammer assembly they come with pins and springs you also get in the package a little vial of grease very good grease that we found that works very well on our sear surfaces and you also get this little slave pin. And what the slave pin does is it replaces the trigger pin when you're putting the trigger assembly in the receiver. It just makes it easier to install, easier to align your pin when you, when you, when you insert it. First thing you do, just push your trigger pin out that's been installed from the factory. And you're going to install your slave pin. Here in the shop, we don't use the slave pin. We, we find it just as easy to align the disconnector by hand. But if you don't work on these all the time, the slave pin can come, uh, is, is a very handy tool. So as you can see, the slave pin does not extend out past the trunnions of the trigger. Trigger assembly gets fit down inside right past the safety. You'll notice my hand. My, my finger is right on top of the trigger. And the trigger's under spring tension right now. And you have to align the trigger hole with the hole in the receiver. And there's a little trick to it because it's under spring tension. But what you do is just practice a little bit and move it around and get your finger positioned so where you can align your hole with the hole in the receiver. Don't try as soon as you see it, try to force the pin in. Everything here that we do, as you can see, this is a slip fit in the receiver. There is no pounding, there's no interference fits, there's nothing like that. You do not use force to put anything in. So basically you look through the hole, align your slave pin up, it's silver, so you can see, see it very easily. And I just inserted the pin, and the pin is in partially doesn't matter where the grooves are on the side. This side groove can be to the left side or the right side of the weapon, it doesn't matter. As you can see here, the slave pin started to be pushed out the other side and it's keeping the disconnector aligned. And all we do is just push our uh, trigger pin home. Sometimes you gotta put a little a little force on top of the disconnector to get everything aligned. Our slave pin popped out and we have our trigger pin installed. You'll notice the Geisley pins have a small spherical dimple on the ends. It's just to identify our pins and make it a little bit easier for a punch to center up on it. Um, there are some aftermarket pins out there, non-rotating pins. We don't recommend using them. Uh, they're not the right size and they're soft. The Geisley pins are 4140 Pro Molly steel. They've been turned, heat treated, and then centerless ground within a couple tenths tolerance on the diameter with a 16 finish. They're a very strong, very good pin. Since they're hardened, they don't embed dirt into the pin surface, which can wear your receiver walls. Now your trigger's installed. Just try it, make sure it's free. Make sure your disconnector goes up and down under spring tension. And now it's time for the hammer installation. 
You're going to need to pop this pin out. You can use your, your finger to pop it out or sometimes you might need to push it against a bench or something in order to pop it out. If it's very difficult to come out and some of our, of our pins uh, have significant tension from the J-hook, just take a hammer and smack it and you'll smack that pin right past the J-hook. Here's your hammer spring. Notice the way it's installed. The bow is toward the back or near the tail of the hammer. It can be flipped around. In case you take it off, you can't have it in backwards. You'll have light primer strikes uh, if this isn't installed correctly. You'll also notice on our hammer spring that the legs and the bow are pretty much parallel to each other. We use a full strength hammer spring. With our light hammer, this allows the guys the SSA to set off any type of ammunition, any type of hard primered military ammunition, Russian 545, 308, 762 ammo, even the hard primered uh, steel cased Russian 762 ammo. Anything it'll set off. You won't have any problems with light primer strikes. We do that for a couple reasons. Uh, make a strong hammer spring. One is, of course, for reliability reasons. Uh, but the other reason goes back to a test that the Army Marksmanship Unit did with aftermarket triggers that did not have full power hammer springs. They took an upper receiver, very accurate upper receiver, clamped it in a machine rest that they have there, and they did accuracy testing on it, just replacing the lower with the trigger in it. A good trigger with a good strong hammer spring, they get nice tight groups of 300 yards. You put a receiver with a trigger with a compromised hammer spring, one where the legs may be at an angle to each other, and the groups open right up. Groups are centered up, but big and round. So testing has shown that you get a much more accurate weapon with a good solid strike on the primer, which aids in consistent ignition. Now in order to install this, it's going to be under spring tension. And you just have to be uh, careful when you do this and take your time and be able to manipulate your hammer around in order to line the holes up. Don't rush. Don't try to shove it in there and for a split second get the holes aligned and then try to jam the pin in. Just take your time and, and understand how this fits in there. First thing ha that you do is these hammer spring legs go on top of the trigger pin. They don't go underneath it. You go underneath it you're going to get light primer strikes. You're not going to get the full force of the hammer pin. And your trigger pin will walk when firing because these legs won't capture it. So all you do is just lay it on top. Lay it on top of the trigger pin. This is how I hold it when I put it in. Two, two fingers, one down here, one on top of the tail. Take your time. Practice lining up your hammer. With the hole, you'll see the trigger moving back as it pushes it down. Make sure your safety's in the fire position when you're doing this. Take your hammer pin, line it up, push it right in. You might have to wiggle the hammer a little bit. Notice it's not installed fully. You want to tap this guy in just a little bit. The hammer is cocked now in the receiver. You will not be able to drive this pin home. You have to line up the other side here with your pin. And the way you do that is you just grab your hammer, look down the hole, align your pin up. Just move it around and twist it. You might have to twist it a little bit. Align your pin up with the hole and just push it through. You might need a little tap here. Not sure if you can see this, but you can see the hammer spring legs in here. They're sitting on top of the trigger. Everything is installed. That's all you need to do. Cock your hammer, control it. Don't let it slam forward onto the receiver. You can break the receiver after many strikes there and crack it. This is your first stage. You'll notice slack. It's basically slack in the trigger. This is a two-stage trigger military type combat trigger. The SSA is not a match trigger. 
It's a combat trigger. It breaks like a carrot. It's approximately a pound and three quarter to two pound break. First stage is about two and a half to three and a half pounds. So you'll have anywhere from a four and a half to five and a half pound trigger. It breaks like a carrot, not like an icicle. It's designed this way because fine motor skills degrade in a stressful situation. And this trigger is designed for situations where the shooter is going to be under stress. If it was a very light trigger, very light break on the second stage, the shooter would not be able to control this trigger in a stressful situation. Here's your first stage. This first stage in a two-stage trigger provides safety, reliability, and forgiveness in a combat trigger. After your first stage, it comes to a wall. You see it stop. Additional pressure on the trigger, and the hammer falls. This is how you use a two-stage trigger. For a close-in shot, you don't even pay attention to second stage. You just pull it. You go right through it. You have a shot where you're going to, it's a, more of a precise shot. You line your sights on target. Pull through your first stage. At the instant you want the shot to break, a little bit more pressure, and it goes. Check your safety. Turn it on. Pull the trigger hard. Hammer shouldn't fall. Now let's lubricate this properly. We take some lubricating oil, anything, you can use anything, CLP. One drop on top of the disconnector, right where the pin goes through. One drop next to the receiver walls, near where the hammer spring meets the receiver walls. You take your little vial of grease. You take a little pick. Pull a little bit out. You put it on the inner and outer hooks of the hammer. Just a little bit. You don't have to use it. I'm putting a little bit here underneath the trigger. A little bit on the face of the disconnector. If you don't want to use grease, you don't have to. The sears do require a little bit of lubrication. I recommend using grease at the very least for break-in. You could use CLP or any type of good gun oil at those locations there. And as you can see right now, we have a beautiful two-stage trigger pull. Very easy to install. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the history of the, of the SSA. It's the semi-auto only version of a trigger that Geisley makes for US SOCOM. We make a trigger called the Super Select Fire for quote unquote special forces units in the United States military. There's different versions of the Super Select Fire or SSF that we make. This is set up the way the most popular SSF is set up for the special forces operators. Uh, some like it heavier, some like it lighter, some like a little bit different break which we accommodate for them. But this is generally what they like right here. Three pound first stage, two pound second stage, carrot like break. This trigger here, without the auto sear and auto tail, is also used on the uh, uh, Mark 11 weapon used by Crane Naval Surface Warfare Center, which they've safety certified this trigger for, for use in the uh, uh, Navy SOCOM. Trigger's made out of precision investment cast tool steel. Um, double tempered. It's uh, cyrogenically treated, negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit, all the components are. All the springs are music wire, very strong, and corroded with an anti corrosive, uh, any uh, uh, corrosion coating. Every part is magnetic particle inspected. And every part has a lot number traced on it, laser marked on there. So we can trace this part back to every operation, whoever touches it, whoever assembles it, whoever puts the J-hook in, um, whoever mag particles it, we can trace it back to whoever does any work on it whatsoever in our shop. Total traceability. Uh, it's very reasonably priced, $170 for this trigger. And uh, with it, you get a great 
combat tight match trigger. Works very well, good for carbine work. If you're doing long range work with a scope, let's say over four power, we always recommend our national match line of triggers. We have match rifle DMR, surface rifle triggers. Um, but for a combat type gun, the SSA can't be beat. So thanks for watching this today.